This is the eighth lesson of the Next Generation Security Management Training. In this lesson, we're going to cover multi domain security management inside R80. So, we're going to talk about the following topic. We're going to talk about multi domain security management under the covers. So, what's the difference between the database then and now? We're going to talk about the processes in the data flow, and then we're going to talk about high availability and database sync. After that, we're going to cover limitations in the general availability release, and then we're summarizing everything with some hands on lab. In the first part of the first chapter, MDSM under the covers, we're going to talk about the database then and now. As you might remember, in the past, on a multi-domain server, we had multiple different files with multiple different databases. We had one file for the MDS database, we had another file for the global domain database, we had unique database files for each user domain, also called domain management servers. In R80, we have a new way that is faster, better, and cleaner. Everything is stored within one database, the PostgreSQL SQL database, and the different domains are separated with domain IDs inside this database. So as you might remember, we still have our system domains and we have our user domains. The system domains, if I have a small recap on what we talked about in the architectural slides, contains the system data domain with admin folders, domains, trusted GUI clients, permission profiles, and so on. The checkpoint data domain is a read-only domain containing the default objects and services pre-populated by checkpoint. Our IPS data domain still contains the IPS updates, similar for API domain, and then we have our log data domain containing the configuration data of the different log servers. The difference between the database layout in a security management server and a multi-domain server is the following. The global data domain now contains objects containing the global objects and the global policies. In addition to this, we're now having multiple user data domains instead of just one single user data domain as we had on the security management server. Each user data domain is equivalent to the old CMA we were referring to in the past. Each domain management server is located on a separate user data domain with its own user object, rules, services, etc. In R18 later, the user domain is now paired with the global domain. So this creates a much faster, better, and cleaner way of assigning the global domain with the user domain. It makes it much more efficient since there's no need to copy the global domain objects anymore as we had to do in the past down to the user domain. We just need to create a peering relation that is done between revisions of the database domain. In this example, we have a user domain where we've done multiple publish operations that could, took us to revision number three of the user domain. The assigned global policy operation created revision number four on the user domain and pair it to revision number one of the global domain. The publish which created revision number two on the global domain was not visible on the user domain until the reassigned global policy operation was executed. This reassigned operation updated the user domain to look at the latest revision number two of the global domain. The publish, which created revision number six on the user domain, will keep the pairing to revision number two of the global domain. But as you see, when you do changes to the global domain and press publish, a new revision on the global domain will be created. In order for the user domain to get information about the changes done on the global domain, for example, the new rules, the new objects, and so on, so they should be available inside the user domain, you need to reassign the global policy in order to update the user domain. And when you reassign the global policy to the user domain, a new revision of changes inside the user domain will be created. The same technique is also for threat prevention updates and application control update. Each update creates a new revision in the relevant data domain. Threat prevention domain or application control domain, as we mentioned earlier, the user domain is paired to a revision of the data domain in the multi-domain management. Each user domain can be paired with a different revision of the global domain or data domain. 
Let's talk a little bit more about the global domain. The function of the global domain is the following. It contains global access policies that includes application control, URL filtering, data awareness, and mobile access. Please remember that data awareness and mobile access will require R80.10 gateways in order to use that in a unified policy. As you see, it's not only for firewalling anymore. It contains possibilities to create global rules for all these different types of services. It also contains global threat prevention layers and policies. So it's not just for global IPS as it was in the past. It do contain, of course, global objects. It's also possible to have global objects without a policy assigned to the domain. So you can share objects only and not having any global domain rules assigned to that domain. So there's, as mentioned earlier, no more need to copy the global database to separate local domain management server database. And this will make the solution much, much more efficient. Please remember, when doing changes inside the global domain, policy reassignment is still required and is still a manual process that needs to be done from the MDS environment. Let's talk a little bit about uh, processes and data flow. So these are the main processes inside a multi-domain server of version R80. We have CPM in the multi-domain server. We have a main CPM process. We have RFL and Solar for indexing. And then we have SmartU, SmartLord Indexer, and CPWD. We also have MDS FWM, FWD, CPD and CPHA, similar to what we have in the past on pre r management servers. In addition to that, we have our domain management servers with our different domains, where we have our FWM, FWD, CPD, CPCA processes, and we also have the indexer and smart log for each and every domain to be able to index logs for the specific domain and also index objects in the database for that specific domain. The GUI client will connect to the main process, CPM, in order to communicate with the multi-domain server towards the MDS IP address. So client and server will talk via the web service interface over CPM using port 1909. The CPM process will communicate to each and every domain towards the FWM process and update the FWM process about object creation and changes done in the Postgres SQL database where everything is stored. So where is the multi-domain graphical user interface? In RAT, everything has been unified, so you don't have a dedicated application. You use your normal smart console and connect to the MDS server IP address. When you're doing that, you're going to be asked if you want to connect to the MDS level or if you want to connect towards a certain domain inside the MDS or to the global database. If you select to connect to the MDS level, you will have a similar view as you have with the previous multi-domain graphical user interface but inside Smart Console, where you can work with your different domains, you can create new domains, you can enter domains, you can assign the global database towards certain domains, and so on. Does this view look familiar? Inside the code, we're still referring to CMAs, so that's why I'm talking about CMAs in this presentation as well. So CMAs is equivalent to customer management add-on, that means a domain, where you have your domain management server. The new terminology is referring to domains and domain management servers. But when troubleshooting, you will see references to CMA inside the code. In the second part of the first chapter, we're going to talk about high availability and database sync. So basically, when you're configuring a MDS server to be used for high availability, what happens is that the Postgres database domains are copied over to the secondary MDS server. When establishing SIC between the primary multi-domain server and the secondary multi-domain server, everything starts with a full sync, where we're copying all the information inside all the different domains over to the secondary MDS server. After that, only delta changes are synced after the initial full sync. After the initial full sync, only delta syncs are done. They are based on internal database revision controls. There is no overwrite all anymore, which means that the amount of data that is sent from the primary management server to the secondary management server, it's much, 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 much smaller since it's only delta changes compared to how it was in the past. The sync is done automatically and happens every 60 seconds. It includes unpublished updates and the interval is configurable. It also happens when someone press publish, then an explicit sync 
happens between the management server. The sync process is from the CPM process, sending the changes, delta changes into FWM, communicating over SICK to the secondary MDS server, sending the delta changes to CPM, storing it in the Postgres database. More details on this in next slide. So have our primary MDS and our secondary MDS with our different domains, our CPM process and our Postgres SQL database. The CPM process is communicating towards the FWM processes. The FWM process is doing HA sync over SICK to the secondary MDS and sending delta changes of changes done inside the Postgres SQL database. The FWM processes on the secondary MDS is communicating with the CPM process that is forwarding down the information down to the secondary MDS Postgres SQL database. As mentioned earlier, following SIG establishment with the secondary MDS server, the database Postgres and also Solar is fully synchronized from the primary to the secondary MDS. New changes are delta synced from the active to the standby MDS server. Domains relevant audit logs are exported from the active domains and replayed on the standby domains on the secondary MDS. Synchronization, as mentioned, is triggered in two ways. Schedule task called Heartbeat runs by default every 60 seconds and is configurable or during publish operations. In the second chapter, we're going to touch upon some limitations in the general availability release referring to MDS environment. First of all, always refer to the Secure Knowledge article about Checkpoint R80 known limitations. These are some of the known limitations concerning MDS environments. So global VPN communities are not supported. Dynamic global objects are not supported. You can't do portal assignment of global objects. Well, the only reason we needed to do that in the past was because we didn't want to copy all the global objects from the global domain to local domain because we wanted to keep the local domains as small as possible. Now, in R80, this is not needed anymore because we have a more efficient way so we have a pairing relationship. So therefore, we don't need to care about partial assignment because we don't copy all the objects down to local domains. We're just pairing between the local and global domains. You can't have a smart center server as a standby management for a domain in R80. And automatic install policy in local gateways after assigning the global policy is not possible in the R80 version. Now, some of these limitations is going to be lifted in R80.10, so please refer to the R80.10 limitations to see which ones have been lifted. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's good for you to be aware of which features on a general level we're not supporting if you're upgrading your environment. So, if you're using global VPN communities, you might want to wait to a later version where this is supported. If you're upgrading and you're using dynamic global objects and you check the R80.10 release notes or known limitations, you will see that that limitation will be lifted in R80.10, etc. This lesson has briefly touched upon the architecture, the processes, high availability environment, etc. of multi-domain management solutions inside R80. Let's continue with some hands-on labs. So in the first lab, you're going to log into the MDS. You're going to explore Smart Console to be able to identify how to check the domain status, for example, how to check the gateway status, how to form licensing, and how to navigate multiple different customer domains. In lab number two, you're going to work with permission profiles. You're going to create a new permission profile called MingT. You're going to create user SID. And then you're going to apply that profile to SID and test how the graphical user interface looks like depending on which permissions you have assigned to SID when he's logging in. In lab number three, we're going to work with global policies. You're going to create and apply a global policy, assign that to two domains. Explore the domains before you assign the global policy and look at them afterwards. Try to do publish on the global domain without reassigning the policy to the local domains and see what happens. And then log out of the local domains or stay within the local domains and press reassign and see what happens. In lab number four, we're not going to create a new domain with a new domain management server. So create a new domain and then basically explore that domain in order to understand how to do that. In lab number five, we're going to work with MDS HA environments. So replicate one or more domains to the Verticon MDS O2 server, authenticate directly to the replica of that domain, 
fail over one domain, authenticate again to the replica of that domain in order to see what happens and what the behavior is when you're failing over from standby to active in a high availability domain solution. Good luck.